First of all, Sir Joe, welcome to uh, the Netherlands from a fellow Queenslander. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Nice to be here. My secretary, Peter Annabat, comes from Holland and a very good secretary. Fine. Now, might I ask you first of all about the um, Olympic Games for Brisbane 1992? Of course, you're very much hoping that this uh, will become a reality. Yes, it's quite a possibility. From the information I have, I'm sure we've got a 50-50 chance. Uh, we've got a good state. We've got uh, the ability to hold it. We've demonstrated that and through the Commonwealth Games, through Expo that we're doing now. And uh, it's just a step further along the road and we are naturally looking with uh, happy anticipation to an acceptance of our submission. What can Queensland, uh, in particular Brisbane, offer over other places, uh, such as Amsterdam, say? Well, for example, we can offer a, a tremendous state with all its resources, with a government that has the right policy of stability, of uh, support for private enterprise, uh, one that's been demonstrated by the fact that we're the lowest tax state. We haven't many of the taxes most of the other states have. And uh, indeed, uh, we are growing at d double the national average. All these things indicate that it's an excellent state uh, with all the potentials uh, for the holding of such games and the development resources that might be necessary or uh, that are available to others who'd like to invest. What have you been doing yourself in respect to the games on this tour? I understand that you have uh, already been to Munich. Yes, we went to Munich and we inspected the uh, site of the Munich Olympic Games. We spent uh, the best part of a day there and uh, the people were very cooperative and helpful and indeed said they would be prepared to uh, uh, give any information, support and help they could to officers that we would send over. And have you been uh, doing any other study on this? Have you, uh, are you interested in what Amsterdam has to offer? Or are you going to be checking their proposals at all? Uh, not necessary at this particular point of time. We know that they are interested. We know that there are other, other cities and countries interested. Um, but it, it's a matter for the commission or committee that uh, make that decision after they've had the, an assessment of all the uh, applications that are presented. Have you already started the ball rolling for the Games uh, in Queensland in 1992? Has a detailed submission been prepared at this stage? Has much been done about it at this stage? No, there hasn't been a great deal done other than uh, we have applied, we have put in an application, we've given the background of our reasons for um, the uh, application. Uh, that, of course, uh, is something that is well on the way as far as preparation is concerned and also the fact that the uh, we expect or hope Commission will uh, visit Queensland where we will show and present a further detail. Now the Commonwealth Games of course were a, a bit of a, a curtain raiser for the possibility of the Games for Brisbane, um, but the Olympic Games is a, a vast, uh, vastly bigger uh, organisation. Uh, what about security arrangements? Um, could Queensland handle the um, upstaged uh, security arrangements? Yes, I'm quite sure we could and we've demonstrated in Australia more than any other state uh, that we are capable of doing just that one thing. Uh, we've demonstrated as far as uh, the uh, well riots and so on that took place in other states, the strikes and marches through the street and all that goes with it doesn't happen in Queensland. We control it, we prevent it and we are very much on the ball and as I said we're a stable state, we're a responsible government, we act that way and we've been in power power since 1957 and I think that speaks for itself. We have strong support of the people in our action in these areas. So in other words you'll be giving Amsterdam a run for its money in this proposal? Well it's not a necessary uh, thinking that way, uh, uh, whether it's Amsterdam, Paris or some other place, it's a matter of uh, we presenting our cases, they will present their case and then let the people responsible make the judgment. Thank you very much, Sir Joe. And if we could ask you after on a few other things yes. after your meeting, sir. Um, oh, OK, fine. Uh, we still rolling there? Yeah. Um, OK, test one, make sure it's going. Right. <coughs> Um, so, Joe, I've read with interest about the uh, fact that tourists from South Africa... Uh, um, let me just explain for a moment. I'm doing a little bit of work for South Africa yeah, as well. Okay, that's good. Right. I read with interest, Sir Joe, that um, tourists from South Africa are welcome in Queensland. Um, first of all, do you respect the Glen Eagles agreement on sporting contact with South Africa? Well, it's a Commonwealth matter. It's got nothing to do with our state. Uh, we uh, are not involved in that and I don't know that it does a great deal of good. I don't support it myself personally in the sense because what about putting our own house in order? We have apartheid to a very great extent in, in Australia today with the way the started by Mr Whitlam's government and by Mr Fraser's government and now by the present government of dividing the, the uh, black from the white, the Aboriginals from the uh, rest of the community. 
uh, giving them vast tracts of land and separating them from the rest of the community. Who are we that we should be telling others what to do? Secondly, uh, in the field of sport, uh, what's that got to do with the political matters and uh, or the policies of government? I think that if nations around the world will start to look after their own affairs, or try to, and, and do the right thing in their own areas, uh, that might be something more to the point than trying to tell other people what to do. I'm a strong supporter uh, of the South African government's right to do their thing the way they are doing it and are trying to do overcome this problem, which is a very complex one in that country because of the variety uh, of uh, or numbers of different uh, uh, groups of um, people in that in that country. So you loosely agree with what they are doing there. I don't agree with apartheid at all. I'm completely opposed to apartheid as I am here in Australia. But I say we are doing, we are creating apartheid in Australia as fast as the Commonwealth Government can do it. And uh, segregating, they, they are given far, uh, entirely different conditions, support in every other area. And indeed, as I said, many places in Northern Territory, there are big signs up, no white man beyond this point. All this sort of stuff's going on everywhere. And, uh, and I said, let's clean up our own backyard first. Would Queensland be the only Australian state to uh, perhaps open the doors to the South African tourists, or does this go on in well, other states? Well, I'm not interested in what the other states do. They're wrong in so many other pla places. The socialists, the uh, hardcore Labour socialists who are governed by the communists, as we saw in New Zealand when the party and the organisation tell their Prime Minister that they don't want to be part and parcel of ANSYS. And this is the sort of party that the Australian Labour Party also mixed up with. And uh, there you, you have that problem. But as far as South Africa is concerned, let me say this. The, their resources are vital to the free world. Their sea route around the Cape is vital to the free world. And that's one of the things that I get deeply concerned about when we try to isolate them and try and, and ostracize them and try and, and, well, dictate their policies. I believe they're doing it as fast as they can to overcome all these different racial problems that exist. And uh, they should, and so should we. Do you see any similarities between South Africa and Queensland? Well, I, I've never been to South Africa. I'm um, not aware identically how the, or they may relate or not to our own problem, but all I do know that I'm concerned with what uh, the Australian government at the very moment is doing as far as setting the Aboriginal people apart from the rest of the population of Australia. Sir so Joe, I'd like to ask you um, at the end of all this, perhaps after your uh, next meeting about Enterprise Queensland, but um, a few personal details. Uh, I did ask you on the telephone a few years ago, I think from um, Sydney, how long do you intend to stay in the job? Well. I, I don't think I or anybody would know that. Uh, my objective is to uh, keep going as long as I can, health-wise. That's very vital because the job of a Premier is uh, almost seven days a week, uh, operation, long hours, late nights, up early in the morning and so on. And th that is tied largely then to health. How s what long one can maintain the pressures that we are under and the pace we go. Simple as that. Fortunately, I'm thankful that, well, God's given me good health over the years and I have no problem. And uh, again, we have Expo 88, that's an objective that I want to see through. Commonwealth Games 92, well, let's wait and see. Has this trip, uh, which is uh, rather demanding, uh, been a strain on you at all? No, not, not at all, no. That's just, uh, uh, well, I think even e much easier, perhaps more relaxing than it is at home with all the pressures on from every angle. So you see this uh, tour of Europe uh, as a little bit of a, a break away from things? Well, it's a variety and it's interesting, it's exciting seeing and meeting people as we are all the time whom we're encouraging to come out and invest in our state. Uh, if uh, and when you do decide to um, retire or step down, um, is there anybody in particular you'd like to see take uh, or step into your shoes? Well, that's so far away that I don't even think about it. Well, can I ask you this? Uh, what path would you like to um, see Queensland put on? Well, I'd like to just stay on the one that I've got it run going on at the moment, growing and prospering and the best state in which to live in which people come to us at, uh, by the hundreds every week. And uh, much doubling our population uh, is against the, uh, way, the way the states increase in the other parts of uh, Australia. Uh, their rate of increase is only half that of ours. So Joe, how would you like to be best remembered? I'm not particularly concerned at all, never want to be remembered or I'm not interested whether I'm remembered or not. That never enters my head. And uh, uh, no, I don't uh, wish anybody to even bother remembering me as far as that's concerned. That's uh, as long as we can do the right thing while we're here, all of us, 
I think that's the main objective we all ought to have and to perhaps leave the place where we work or the place where we are in politics better because of our being there and trying to help as many people as possible. I think Queensland, uh, the way it is today, is uh, well evidence of a good government. Now, can we just uh, move on to the enterprise Queensland? Uh, this is the reason why you are here in the Netherlands or in Holland. Mm. Um, does que Queensland, perhaps in your mind, have the edge over other states uh, regarding industrial problems? We've got the edge over them in every way, and uh, there's no argument about that. Our taxes are by far the lowest. Uh, we haven't got many of the taxes they have. We've got no death duties, gift duties, wealth tax, and uh, we've got no beer tax, cigarette tax, no petrol tax, no FID, that's financial institution duty. All these taxes that all the other states have got, we haven't got them. We are, and our payroll tax is lower than any of the other states. And so we've got a great place in which to live, and we've got nothing to fear. And this is why we are growing, and we are the state that peeps the seek after. Uh, do you think Queensland, would you be safe to say that it's uh, more geared to business interest being, um, you know, amongst all the other states which are Labour now? Uh, well, very, very definitely, because I'm a private enterprise man. I've been a, a contractor with heavy equipment uh, for a good many years, and I also, um, um, well, my instinct, am very supportive of, of business, because they generate the jobs, they generate the money. And so this is why I'm very strong in our support that way, and the other states are not. They are socialist states, and therefore they uh, do not attract business as we do. We'll just hold it there. Uh, have we got, have got the um, meeting coming up? Okay, fine. Are we still rolling? Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> not getting any level. No, no level. Yeah. Test one. Right. You getting a reading there? Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Um, so, Joe, how will you try to convince the Dutch people that they should spend their money in Queensland? Well, I'll just tell them what Queensland is, what type of state it is, what type of government it is, uh, the, limit, the um, almost limitless um, amount of resources that we've got, the uh, area that Queensland covers, it, it's so vast and we're so few in numbers that there's ample scope for anybody who wants to come out and put his shoulder to the wheel, particularly, of course, the investor. Then there are long lists of people or companies and organisations who would accept or would like uh, someone to participate with them in their project and we leave a list of those behind us so that you can see whether it's in engineering or any other field there's an opportunity should an investor want to come out to Australia and start a new life in our state, in Queensland. What type of businesses do you need uh, in Queensland? Any, in, any particular ones that are well, in short supply? Well, the one that, uh, in which is an enormous opportunity is that of tourism. Uh, Queensland has the right climate, we have the barrier reef, we have so many other resources, beautiful tropical islands, we have 2,300 miles of coastline, so there's ample scope and there are tourist resorts coming into being all along our coastline, but there is still a vast uh, opportunity. Uh, in that field of tourism because the world is starting to come to Queensland, new airlines are coming in and so on, bringing people from around the globe. And that's where there's a great opportunity. And, and there's so many others, of course. Right, so you're uh, interested in getting uh, the Dutch to come out there to Australia and um, do business, invest money. Mm. What about um, the other way around? I mean, is Queensland interested in uh, perhaps um, putting a little bit of business uh, the way of the people in the Netherlands? Well, yes, we are, and we have a group of people with us today. Uh, I think there should be about 20 of them here from Queensland, top businessmen who are prepared to talk um, in, in every angle, whether it's uh, selling or buying. Uh, they're interested, interested to see and hear. Uh, what's available and who, who has something to offer or, or what we have to offer. It's a two-way traffic and we hope and we believe as we've been doing this for a number of years in other countries and it's worked out very, very satisfactorily to all concerned that we will achieve something here in the mutual interest and benefit for both countries. Now you say you're in need of uh, people to invest money in businesses but are you also in need of resourceful type people? Yes. As a matter of fact, well, that's the sort of people we want, resourceful people, people, uh, well, like my secretary, as I said, he, he comes from uh, Holland, and uh, he's a very uh, good secretary, of ability and so on, and uh, these are the sort of people we want that add considerably, and then there is a place for them, for those sort of people, my word, there is.
Whose idea was it to, uh, for you to come around uh, Europe, to go to London, to come here and to go to Frankfurt? Well, it's my idea in, in the first place. We as Premier and as, go as this government, we organised and set about what we call Enterprise Queensland. And we are the only state who travels the world like we do with a group, 10, 20, 30 business people, um, talking uh, to the, uh, the people of the different countries, uh, seeking to interest them because business generates business, and, and that's what life's all about, isn't it? Well, if uh, people come to Australia and want to invest or, or want to work and get permission to go there from the federal government, what help can be given to those uh, people? Well, we can give them a lot of help. It just depends uh, in what area they want to be. We have an industrial development department, which, uh, and we have many industrial estates where we have the land, the electricity and power and so on uh, provided. Uh, we can help uh, finance new industries, provided they're new industries. We can uh, support them in that way, either with erecting the um, big buildings or whatever it might be. But that there is a department to deal with such cases. But mainly, uh, Australia is uh, open to uh, joint ventures because it's e harder to start perhaps just on your own, but if you can join with someone who's already there and knows the background and has a good business, and wants to expand, uh, that's uh, one area in which uh, there is a big opportunity. Now, uh, what is your opinion, say, of Dutch people as far as uh, work's concerned? Uh, do they have a particular reputation in Queensland or in Australia uh, for being um, good workers, hard workers? Yes, they have. They have a very good reputation, a very high reputation. I'd like to see very many more of them come, uh, and I've been saying that in one or two of the other places that we've been visiting too. Uh, we'd like to get more European type people, but the Dutch people are very good and have a, ha, do have a very good reputation in our state and our nation. Now immigration to Australia at this, at this time is a little bit um, tricky to say the least. It's, it's very hard for people to actually move to Australia. Um, have you got any say in whether they can come to Australia uh, with your government? Well, our government welcomes them, but the migration laws of course are controlled by the federal government, by Canberra, and they have to uh, naturally be complied with. And mainly, of course, you've got to have someone out there if you want to migrate that can uh, give you a job and uh, so that you don't become a, an, immediate, an immediate burden on the government and by just coming out there if you're out of work here. You've got to have someone there to, to help and facilitate your employment. And there are a number of these things, but for an investor, he can come uh, as long as he complies with the Foreign Investment Review Board's requirements, and that is you've got to have Australian participation or a partner. And so the, there are ways and means, and there are lots of people coming all the time. So, Joe, thank you very much for talking to us today. Oh, that's a pleasure. Thank you.